Well, good morning, everybody. Can I have your attention, please? Um, thank you very much. Um, my name is Peter Anderson. I'm the CEO of Asthma Foundation Queensland, coordinating this conference with um, Asthma Australia. Um, could I just ask at the start for people to turn their mobile phones off or to silent? Um, my first order of duties is to invite the National President of Asthma Australia, um, Terry Evans, to come to the stage and officially um, welcome everybody. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Peter. Mr Joe Kelly, MP, representing the Minister for Health in Queensland. Ms Marita Cowie, Chairperson of the Asthma Foundation of Queensland. Delegates from across Australia and around the world. Board members and staff of Asthma Foundations and Asthma Australia, ladies and gentlemen. I should say at the outset that I've, this is a first for me, it's the first time I've ever spoken from my iPad because I wanted to demonstrate that I was a 20th, second century sort of a man. So if I suddenly panic and fall over, it's because I, I've lost the connection. <laughs> so welcome to the 2015 Connecting Asthma Care Conference and a special welcome to Brisbane for those of you who've traveled a long way and for a long time to get here. Can I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and the songwoman Maruchi Baramba, who will soon welcome us to country. The Connecting Asthma Australia, the Connecting Asthma Care Conference is symbolic for a number of reasons. This year, the Asthma Foundation of Queensland celebrates its 50th year of service to the people of Queensland, and it joins the foundations in New South Wales, Victoria, SA and WA in achieving this milestone of service. The Asthma Foundation of Queensland is one of the state's most respected charities. So my congratulations go to Queensland on your golden jubilee and on your leadership of the asthma cause in Queensland and your steadfast and committed contribution to the national cause as well. Asthma Australia is delighted that the Asthma Foundation of New Zealand and our sister organisation, the National Asthma Council of Australia, have joined with us in presenting this important event. Our partnership with these two great organisations is highly valued. And I'm very pleased to report that our collaboration with our friends and colleagues at the National Asthma Council is closer than ever. And so close, in fact, that there's good reason to think that a joined up single peak national asthma group that transcends borders and entities is a possibility. Asthma foundations for years have enjoyed the tremendous support of health professionals, GPs, pharmacists, researchers, nurses, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health workers for over 50 years. And this conference is one way in which we can connect the asthma community so that you can all share your knowledge, passion, experience and expertise. So thank you for joining with us. Asthma is a global issue. And we believe that Australia is a leader in the treatment of asthma and in asthma research, but there's still much to be done. A new 2020 asthma strategy has been commissioned by the Australian Government and is now under development. This conference provides an excellent opportunity for you, leading Australian professionals, to connect with each other and with colleagues from around the globe. And to this end, I want to thank our international speakers, Professor Mika Mackler from Finland, Dr Mark Levy from the UK, Professor Lutz Beckert, Beckett, Ms. Janet Mackay and Dr. Natalie Walker, all from New Zealand, for giving up their time to share their wisdom and knowledge with us. This event would not be possible without the generous support of our partners, and it's fitting to acknowledge Mundi Pharma and AstraZeneca, our two presenting partners. Thank you, and I look forward to recognising your contribution and that of our other partners at tonight's welcome function. Asthma Australia is incredibly privileged to have the support of so many important and reputable corporate partners. Much of our success in attracting partners is due to the hard work of Lisa Christen, our National Partnership manage, Manager, and I wanted to take this opportunity publicly to thank her for her efforts. These conferences are the result of significant planning, and it would be remiss if I did not thank the conference organising team 
chaired by our own CEO, Mark Brook, and the Conference Scientific Committee, chaired by Dr. Peter Anderson. Thank you to the national and Queensland teams for staging what I know will be a tremendously successful event. Finally, a few words about Asthma Australia. I'm proud to be the chairperson of a nationally recognised charity that's undergoing considerable transformation. Our federation is the voice of over two million people with asthma, and in the past five years, Asthma Australia has matured as an organisation. Our vision of cure, care and community highlights the important role a strong national body plays in supporting local efforts. Many of you will know that Asthma Australia and the foundations are seriously exploring the possibility of merger. But I want to make it very clear in this forum that it will be critical to any merger that eventuates that we retain all that is good about the foundations, their legacy and history, and their reach into and connection with their local communities. With people with asthma as the focus, open minds and goodwill, I'm sure, uh, will, will, develop, will lead us to develop an even stronger body in the future. And now it gives me great pleasure to welcome Ms. Marucci Maramba to the stage. Palandico, kundu numbuler, palandico, kundu numbuler, yang indai, yang glo, kundai, yang glo. Balandico, kundum numbule, balandico, kundum numbule, balandico, kundum numbule, balandico, kundum numbule, yang indai, yang go, kundai, yang go, balandico, kundum numbule. Balam di ko kundu numbule. Bukhari marumba mianjanu. Let's welcome to Brisbane in the language of the Turbu people. In accordance with tra the traditions of the, the one kinship system with southeastern Queensland, of which the Turbu people are of, um, when we do welcome to country, it is done as a blessing of the gathering in a song but I generally take full advantage of opportunity just to share a little bit about our culture with the broader community. Firstly, I'd like to extend the appreciation of the Turbul people to the uh, organisers of this event for, um, I suppose, um, issuing a, an invitation for us to be a part of this in this capacity. Um, we really think we are truly blessed to get opportunities like this, um, particularly... Um, I suppose we get it more than most because we are one of the capital cities and they tend to have conferences in them and football matches and things like that. And G20 summits, so we get the opportunity to get those, do those things, but that's a blessing for us. But, um, but historically, the Turbul people were um, documented as being extinct or on the verge of extinction way back in the 1860s and there's just one little family that survived the impact of European settlement upon our ancestral homelands. And we're st still here and we're also a part of that bigger kinship system. So we've got cousins on the either side of the border, first cousins or whatever. So, um, yeah, in, the, in our laws and customs, uh, you could have a bloodline connection to country to be of that country. So that's the way they, I suppose, the demarcation with the cousins in the neighbouring tribal groups. It's a little bit of Aboriginal. Uh, and, uh, explaining Aboriginal history for this region, uh, particularly our observation of our laws and customs. So I'll do the blessing of the gathering and I hope you have a wonderful um, conference. Yeah, you sure do need, um, I suppose, to uh, a lot of work in the asthma field. I've, I've never had it until I, I gradually I got it in my like 40s or something. Never had it in my childhood. So, um, yeah, it was when I came back to Queensland. I don't know what it was. must have been the pollen. Because uh, you know how I was taken to Melbourne as a child, like under the integration assimilation policy of the day. So I grew up on Sherberg Mission up until then because we lived under the Aborigines Protection Act. And, and then they started taking some of the children away. Um, 
in my case, I think it was to give me uh, opportunities. So I did not lose my Aboriginal family, but uh, gained another family, so a non-Aboriginal family in cold old Melbourne. That's probably why I'm wearing this scarf. It's the sort of, I suppose, a common sight you see in Melbourne, people walking around in scarves like this. Um, yeah, so um, um, yeah, with the movement of um, uh, the integration policy, it's had an effect. Anyway, I came home and first time I discovered asthma was in my, I'm not getting old, I was about to be my age. Oh yeah, I suppose I could, in my mid 40s. Uh, uh, yeah, so um, <laughs> I'll do the blessing and have a great time today. <laughs> okay. I've been to a number of conferences where Marucci has come to do Welcome to Country and I've never ceased to be um, amazed and inspired by, by her Welcome to Country. It's really quite moving. Um, I'm not sure if I'm correct, Marucci, but I believe that you're classically uh, opera trained and one of the only two classically trained Aboriginal opera singers in Australia. So we really are quite fortunate to have Marucci here today. Um, it's my pleasure now to welcome to the stage uh, Joe Kelly. Joe is the um, the member for Greenslopes. We had previously hoped to have the Health Minister Cameron Dick to come to the conference and officially open it for us, but the Minister's been called away at the last moment. So I'd now like you to, to welcome Joe, who's very kindly uh, offered to step in in the Minister's place. So thank you, Joe. Good morning. I'd like to respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners on the land whose, uh, whose land we meet today and acknowledge their elders, past, present and emerging. I too would like to add my thanks to uh, songwoman Maruchi Brambar for that lovely welcome to country. I too have heard it many, many times um, and it gets better each time and I learn a little bit more uh, about Maruchi because she's so generous in sharing her culture and her own personal life story. And I think there's much we can learn from that. I'd like to also acknowledge and thank Terry Evans uh, from Asthma Australia for the kind uh, introduction here today. Um, and I'd like to specifically this week acknowledge any midwives that might be in the room here today. Um, it is International Midwives Day later in the week. Uh, and as we all know, good prenatal care, good maternal care can set a platform for good health for a person's entire life. So keep up the good work to all my colleagues who are midwives. Uh, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to open the 2015 Australasian Asthma Conference in our beautiful city of Brisbane. I'd like to extend a warm Queensland welcome to you all, especially our interstate and overseas visitors. 
Hopefully you'll get the time to travel about five to ten minutes down the highway to the great seat of Greenslopes, where I'm from. Many beautiful things to see there. Um, and, and many, many good people in that area work uh, in the healthcare uh, sector, myself included and my wife included. We've gathered to talk about Australia's most widespread chronic health problem, asthma. Uh, asthma is a significant health issue in many, if not most, parts of the world, including our near neighbours in Asia and the Pacific. Being able to breathe freely is such a fundamental part of feeling well, of having energy, of enjoying life, that those without respiratory conditions tend to take it very much for granted. As a nurse of 26 years, I probably would put myself in that category as well. Um, sadly, often as nurses, we're across so many different fields that we don't know enough about each individual field. Uh, our attitude and our knowledge around respiratory conditions generally has improved greatly in the 26 years that I've been involved in nursing. Um, and probably one of the best things that's hap happened over the last 10 years or so from a nursing perspective has been the rearrangement and colour coding of our observation chart. A very simple act based on research um, introduced has saved significant lives. Um, and at the top of those charts now uh, is the need for nurses to assess and consider breathing and oxygenation. Um, it is the first sign of deterioration for people. Uh, and if we act on it quickly, we can save many, many lives, and we do. Like many nurses, I see patients for a very short period of time. I'm specialised in rehab, uh, so we get to see patients for a, for a little bit longer. Um, but the reality is you don't really fully understand the impacts of any particular illness on an individual until it happens to someone you know very well or, or you love dearly. Uh, I've had the great opportunity over the last few years to work with a number of patients who uh, suffer from COPD and have worked through a, a rehabilitation program uh, with those patients. And it's increased greatly my knowledge and understanding of COPD. Um, and while I would have worked with those people for several weeks, it wasn't until my uh, mother-in-law developed COPD that I started to build an understanding of exactly how debilitating um, respiratory conditions can be. And I'm sure that is the case uh, for people who suffer from as asthma. As I understand it, 10.2% uh, of Australians have asthma based on the ABS statistics for 2011 and 2012. That's about 2.3 million people. That's a significant number of people. And it's not a number that any of us should take for granted. Asthma Australia and its state and territory asthma foundations have been working hard for decades towards being the nation's leading lung health bodies. They offer support, training and resources to the primary health care sector and ensure patients and their carers have the skills, information and powers they need. As someone who has spent the last few years working in the area of acute stroke care, patient uh, education, family education, health education generally in our community is fundamental to preventative health and I wish you well with those endeavours. Along with the other variable work, the Asthma Foundation of Queensland disseminates asthma control packs to consumers and health professionals. These packs include asthma action plans, asthma emergency cards and DVDs to help patients better manage theirs or their child's asthma. And I was pretty impressed to see the tent outside there and I'll be thinking about how I could get that into some of my electorate activities at some point in the future. Um, this initiative was developed in cooperation with the statewide respiratory clinical network. It's a very good example of hospital and community groups working together to achieve better standards of care and better health, outcare, health care outcomes for Queensland. Uh, apparently a formal tr clinical trial of these emergency, de emergency department information packs is being undertaken on the Gold Coast. Hospitals and community groups working together is, is fundamentally important from my perspective and I've seen in my own area of stroke that the really important linkage is not just between the National Stroke Foundation but between local stroke support groups has been in providing uh, better outcomes for patients and their families. So important in fact as you all probably are aware that now in the national quality framework uh, for hospitals and healthcare um, that community partnering is one of, the, one of the standards that we have to work towards. Asthma Foundation Queensland also provides the Asthma Assist Info Line to deliver evidence-based targeted information to support people living with asthma. It endeavours to support culturally, a culturally diverse population 
through education and with resources, such as the asthma education workshops to multicultural health workers, asthma education flip charts, asthma control packs, and culturally appropriate, appropriate asthma action plans. These are all very, very important things. My last posting before being elected a few months ago was as a clinical nurse at the QE2 hospital, which is a hospital based about 10 kilometres from where we are now, um, and it would be one of the most culturally diverse hospitals, both in terms of staff and patients that we have in the state. In fact, as many of you would know, in a rehabilitation ward, we walk every patient to the dining room for meals. One night I sat there, and in a, patient, in a, in a, in a ward with 28 patients, um, between staff and patients, we had 21 different nationalities and languages represented in that room. So cultural diversity is an issue that is increasing significantly across the board, and it's great to see the Asthma Foundation taking that on board. As a government, we are doing our utmost to support people with asthma and other respiratory conditions through our hospital and health services. Queensland's respiratory medicine service delivery approach is mapped out over 10 years in the Respiratory Medicine Statewide Health Service Strategy 2014. And if you haven't read that, I would encourage you to do so. I read uh, part of it over the weekend, um, and it is a good document and gives us a, a good direction to go forward. It's aimed at continual improvement it addresses the diversity of respiratory conditions and identifies service needs, issues and priorities. Amongst other service directions, it commits us to bring innovative, location applicable models of care and service delivery. Over the next two days, you can look forward to hearing from international and local experts in the field of the latest asthma research technologies and treatments. I'm somewhat sad that I have to go to Parliament for the next two days um, because I often would much rather spend my time sitting around at conferences finding out about the latest research. Uh, whenever I go to a conference, particularly related to rehabilitation nursing or stroke care, um, I always learn something that I can take back and apply and make, the, make life better for the patients in my care. And I'm sure that's something that you will all achieve here over the next few days. So I hope the sessions and the networking opportunities prove deeply informative and useful for you. Please enjoy your time here in Brisbane. If you do get the opportunity, come out to Greenslopes. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Joan. And thank you for um, taking time out from what I'm sure is a very busy schedule to stand in for the minister at the last moment. Um, now I have the um, opportunity to go through a few housekeeping things. There are a number of these, but I'll try and go through them uh, fairly quickly. Um, I mentioned about the phones, so please make sure you have those turned off throughout the conference whenever you're coming into a session. Um, it's just better if we're not interrupting um, speakers by having phones go off. So if you turn them on during the breaks, could you please just turn them off when you come back into session? Um, as um, was mentioned earlier, we have a number of trade displays outside. The Asthma Foundation and Asthma Australia spent some time going through um, looking at who would be best to come today and to, 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 uh, to put the trade displays for you. So we've, we've chosen from a number of people to make uh, use of um, the information from the exhibitors and you might also get a couple of um, freebies from those people as well. Uh, please visit the, uh, the Dyson and White Magic stand. Um, they have a, a, a prize. There is an ultimate cleaning pack um, there is also Hudson's uh, have a, a hamper which will be um, drawn this afternoon so make sure you come to the last session this afternoon to be available for that. I'd also like to mention the bird healthcare display which is down the end down here. Um, their display hasn't arrived yet. For people who are in Brisbane will know that on Friday there was a terrible storm so some of the, the things that were supposed to arrive for the conference haven't arrived including the, uh, the conference booklet. So if you didn't get a conference booklet when you are registered, there are those available now which will have the conference program and additional information in there for you. Um, there is a Dyson vacuum cleaner prize. This, the vacuum cleaners from Dyson extremely good. This one is worth $900. Um, to go into um, the draw for the Dyson vacuum cleaner, you need to tweet um, hashtag asthma conference plus at Dyson. So um, you know, I, I would find it hard to to, um, in my budget to be able to um, afford a, a vacuum cleaner for $900, but if you can get one for free, um, make sure you go in that drawer. Um, the plenary sessions today are being held in this room, but the, um, 
The breakout sessions are being held here. This is the Legrand Ballroom. Next door you have um, Ballroom Number One, and around the corner to my left um, we have the Bastille Room. Uh, so that's where the breakout sessions will be throughout the day. There is another um, meeting being held in a room over beside the Bastille, and there's some food over there. So please don't eat their food. All our food will be all our food will be out in the um, the area outside this room. Each of the plenary sessions will be recorded, um, so if the, if the uh, plenary session today will be available tomorrow. If you go to YouTube and you search Asthma Australia, um, each of the plenary sessions will come up um, one day after they've been presented. I need to remind speakers, if you haven't given your presentation to AV partners, could you please do so at least one session before you have to speak? So if you're speaking this afternoon after lunch, then um, in the morning tea break you need to make your way across to AV Partners and they're situated across in the Madeline Room, just the other side of the escalators. Um, if you've been requested to attend a media inquiry, we are working with um, the London organisation um, and London uh, working with the, the major television and radio stations. So if you've been asked as a presenter to, um, to attend for a media interview, the London Agency will be in the Trocadero Room, which is also on the other side of the, the top of the escalators. If you need um, proof of attendance at the conference for CT CPD points, please go to the registration desk and you'll be able to um, sign um, on the registration form to make sure that um, if you do require a, a proof of attendance at the conference, that that'll be provided for you by Asthma Foundation Queensland. We have a roaming photographer who will be walking around taking photos. Um, this will be used for co our correspondence in future, our booklets and communications. If you do not want your photo um, recorded and, and, and um, used in communications, please also inform the people at the registration desk um, to make that clear to them. If you have any dietary requirements, there will be a special table outside just near the registration desk where you can pick up your food if you've ordered that. Um, Wi-Fi is available within the hotel, but there is a charge for that, so you might want to talk to the people outside at the conference concierge, and they should be able to explain to you how you can use Wi-Fi if that's what you want to do. The welcome reception this afternoon will be at the Kangaroo Point Cliffs, so that is a, a short distance from here. There will be three buses that will be leaving from the, the uh, entrance downstairs um, this evening at 6pm, but I need to point out the event is fully booked, so if you haven't already registered um, for the the conference welcome reception this evening. You might have to um, find some alternative ways to uh, entertain yourself this evening. Um, when you, if you do come to the, uh, the conference welcome reception and also around the hotel, please make sure you have um, your badge with you. So this is your, your entry into the welcome reception and also to ensure that you, you are a delegate for, for those purposes. Um, at the conclusion of the welcome reception tonight, there'll be some buses leaving to come back, and the buses will come back to the Sofitel via Fortitude Valley and also by South Bank, and they are the two of the premier restaurant districts. Uh, so the reception tonight will be some, some light hors d'oeuvres, but it won't be a full meal. But if you want to uh, get together with some colleagues and uh, organise to have dinner, you could um, come back on either of the buses and go to Fortitude Valley um, or to South Bank. Um, as per this morning, there are some asthma alive activities, so people might have been out there doing yoga or, or walking and running. They leave from the reception area downstairs here at 6.30. Uh, there are vacancies, so if you want to avail yourself of those tomorrow morning, please meet downstairs and someone in a, a blue um, conference uh, t-shirt, polo shirt, will, will show you where to go. Uh, if there is rain tomorrow morning though, those events will be cancelled. On your name tag pocket, you may notice that there is a, a program, so this will be a, a quick fire way for you to check what's happening and, and where it might be, but certainly if you can get your hands on the conference booklet, if you haven't got one yet, um, that will also have uh, much more in-depth detail about the program and also um, some bios about the speakers, so you can choose um, where you'd like to go. And lastly, um, if you do have any additional questions that I haven't covered off um, this morning, just uh, talk to someone in one of the blue polo shirts, um, they're quite prominent, or go to the reception desk and hopefully we can get your, your questions answered. That's all the um, housekeeping notes for this morning. I'd now like to call to the stage the Asthma Australia um, CEO, uh, Mr Mark Brook, who's going to welcome our first um, plenary session speaker this morning. Mark.